tsunami disaster of 2004. Eight-year-old Amber is on the beach. I really thought the worst. I thought that we'd lost Amber. It was my worst nightmare. She was saved by an elephant. Hang on, save my life. Eddie Mason and his partner, Sam Miles, are on their Christmas holiday in Thailand with their eight-year-old daughter, Amber. We just really wanted some sunshine and rest, really. We just wanted to chill out and have a good time. Wow, Mum, come and look at the bathroom. It was meant to be a holiday of a lifetime. I was excited about going to Thailand because I wanted to learn how to swim properly because I couldn't swim very well. And for Amber, the hotel has a surprise attraction. Four-year-old elephant Ning Nong and his handler Yong are regular visitors here. Look over there. It's a baby elephant. Can I ride it? I felt quite amazed because I've never seen a baby elephant before I went to Thailand. Hi there. Our hotel is really cool. And it has a baby elephant. This is going to be the best holiday. When Amber first saw Ning Nong, she held back a bit because she's quite shy. She's not a girl that's in your face, but they say animals know, don't they? Ning Nong came forward and grabbed her arm. It was almost like an invitation to be my friend for her. I've never seen a baby elephant before, so I was really chuffed. He looked really big to me, and he was really nice, and he came up and gave you a big kiss on the cheek. I guess it was then she really fell in love with Ning Nong. Elephants are undoubtedly one of the brightest animals. They have quite a complex social and emotional life, and they have the ability to form very long-lasting bonds. It was the start of a remarkable relationship that will soon save Amber's life. Over 300 miles away, deep under the Indian Ocean, two continental plates slowly grind ever closer together. The world's worst natural disaster for over 30 years is less than two days away. It's Christmas Eve. Amber and Ning Nong have become inseparable. Hi, Amber. Hello, Ning Nong. Ning Nong's handler, Yong, saw their friendship develop. เท่าที่ผมเคยดูแลช้างมาก็มีนิ่งหนองที่ว่าชอบเด็กมากนิ่งหนองเป็น different to all my friends because he was really playful and he was really kind I liked Ning Nong like really much and I fell in love with him There are a lot of similarities in how young elephants will play and how young children will play. They're both very intelligent, they both have emotional needs. An elephant, as it's growing up, may form a bond with people that are visiting it, and that may even be a child like Amber, and may play with that child like it would play with another young elephant. <laughs> And soon, the little elephant will sense that something is terribly wrong. Out at sea, huge geological pressures are building up. In 24 hours, disaster will strike. Fifty miles up the coast from Amber's hotel is the elephant riding centre at Kawi Lak. 
the animals here will also sense something is terribly wrong, well before the disaster strikes. And it's the special way elephants communicate to each other that will alert them to the danger. Elephants talk to each other using a wide range of sounds. The most important part of elephant communication in the wild is via infrasound. Now, these are very, very low frequency sounds that are too low for us to actually hear. But the advantage for an elephant is these lower pitched sounds travel over much greater distances. Elephants can not only hear these sounds, they can also feel them through their feet and trunks. Earthquakes and tsunamis create infrasounds. Soon, the elephant's extraordinary ability to detect them will mean they will be amongst the first to react to the approaching disaster. Christmas was very different that year because we weren't in our own house, we were in a foreign country. Amber's Christmas presents were all small little things because we didn't bring everything back home. When I think about Christmas Day, I can remember being with Ninglong and I'd give him the bananas before we went on the beach. I liked being away for Christmas. Hi, have you met my friend Ningnong? I'm sure if we'd have said, come on then we'll parcel him up and bring him home, she'd be well happy. Say goodbye Ningnong, it's time to say goodbye, okay? Bye everyone and have a happy Christmas. The barbecue that night, it was lovely. The moon was shimmering, it was very romantic, and we had a good laugh. You could hear the little noise of the sea was going up the sand. It's really cool. Merry Christmas. Cheers. It wasn't until after the tsunami that we thought, what would we have done if it had been that night when the three of us were on the beach? Because we just would never have got away. The tragedy is now less than 12 hours away. Early the following morning at Phuket, all is calm. There is no sign of what's to come. I'm <laughs> Less than an hour before the earthquake strikes, is Ning Nong already feeling some early tremors? When I woke up on Boxing Day, me and my mum got up and we were just doing stuff. Ning Nong was the person she'd wake up every morning and want to see. She would be getting dressed, brushing her teeth, so she could get down there to see the elephant. Less than 300 miles from Thailand, the two continental plates under the Indian Ocean finally collide. Closest to the epicenter and first to be hit is Banda Aceh on the northern tip of Sumatra. The shock waves are soon felt in Thailand. Everything started to move. I just thought it was like wind shaking everything. It didn't really register in my brain what was going on. I didn't really feel scared. I was just like, oh my God, what's happening? 
When I woke up and Sam told me that she thought there'd been an earthquake, my instant reaction was, oh, don't be so ridiculous, we're in Thailand, you don't have earthquakes. And I really didn't think much more of it. An earthquake of this magnitude will always cause a monster tidal wave. Half an hour later, a tsunami rips into Banda Aceh. It was just the beginning. As news reports of the giant earthquake, registering nine on the Richter scale, start to reach Thailand, no warnings are given out. It's only animals like Ning Nong who seem to have a premonition of the horror to come. Ning Nong was behaving really weird. He kept trying to walk the other way. 50 miles away from Amber and Ning Nong, the elephants at Kaui Lak also start behaving very strangely. Earthquakes and tsunamis generate very low frequency rumbles that humans cannot hear. We're not sure how elephants would perceive these loud infrasound rumbles that preceded the tsunami. They're probably just a very, very loud, bizarre sound. And so these intelligent animals' natural instinct would be to move away from this. While the elephants know something is terribly wrong, the tourists on Phuket Beach have no idea of the danger they're in. I was riding Ning Nong, and while I was riding in the sea, had gone out really far. It's the classic sign of an approaching tsunami. Travelling at speeds of up to 800 kilometres per hour, the killer tsunami hurtles towards Amber and Ning Nong. Only Ning Nong can sense it coming. A young elephant that's never heard the sound before may be scared, so it makes perfect sense that he would help Amber and get her away from this scary loud noise that was preceding the tsunami and get her off the beach. Disaster is minutes away. You could say it was mother's intuition or gut feeling, but you know when you just think, today's not the same as every other day. Eight-year-old Amber Owen and her mother and stepfather are on a dream Christmas holiday in Thailand. Amber has formed a close relationship with a four-year-old elephant, Ning Nong. Sam told me that there'd been an earthquake. My instant reaction was, oh, don't be so ridiculous. As reports of the huge earthquake reach Thailand, no warnings are given out. But elephants like Ning Nong sense something is terribly wrong. We're not sure how elephants would perceive these loud infrasound rumbles that preceded the tsunami. They're probably just a very, very loud, bizarre sound. It is less than two hours since the earthquake, and suddenly the sea disappears. Oh, regarde, 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 regarde le marais. Regarde, Brice. I was riding Ning Nong. While I was riding in the sea, had gone out really far. Mm -hmm. The tsunami is minutes away. The hoot was collecting the fish that didn't go back with the sea. Ah. Ah, Ning Nong was behaving like really weird because he kept trying to walk the other way to walk off the beach, but the hoot was pulling him back. As the killer wave rushes towards the beach, Ning Nong reacts.
It's the moment Ning Nong turns animal hero. His quick reactions making the difference between life and death for Amber. Others are not so lucky. There were people running in from the beach towards us, rushing in, screaming, there was a tidal wave. Jesus Christ, look at that. <laughs> that wave oh is a good God. 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. Phuket is engulfed. Sam and Eddie were inside the hotel when the killer wave hit. Winston feeling was, God, where's Amber? Had to get to Amber. That was really the beginning of the, the nightmare. I thought it was a flood, because I didn't really know what tsunami or anything was. The couple decide Eddie will stay in the hotel in case Amber returns. Sam rushes off to look for her. Sam just went running through the hotel, dodging all these people running onto the beach. I really thought the worst. The sea then begins to pull back. The last place Amber was seen was on the beach with Ning Nong. Amber! I was screaming, where's the elephant? Where's the elephant? Amber! I was really, really, really frightened. Amber! But I knew she wasn't dead. Something told me she wasn't dead. Carried to safety by Ning Nong, Amber is now desperate to find her mum and heads back to look for her. Yong runs on to look for his family. I remember finding her and crying because I was scared, crying because I'd found her and she was perfectly OK. It's been just over 10 minutes since the first wave hit Phuket. Big wave! Keep your life, go! There was a second wave coming. We ran up the flight of stairs and there was like loads of screaming and everybody was frightened. Eddie! Papa! You okay, Mimi? You okay? It could have only been two of us coming home. We, as a family, feel very lucky. One man, he had his two-year-old and he just could no longer hold on to her. Phuket was one of the worst affected areas. More than 5,000 people were confirmed dead and thousands more reported missing in Thailand. If Amber had stayed on the beach, she would almost certainly have died. The day after the disaster, Amber was reunited with her animal hero, Ning Nong. He picked me up and gave me a big kiss, and he wrapped me in his trunk. So it made me feel like really happy, because I thought he wouldn't be coming back after tsunami. It's entirely plausible that Ning Nong saw Amber as another young elephant, perhaps a little bit younger than himself. So it makes perfect sense that he would also try and help Amber and get her away from this scary loud noise that was preceding the tsunami and get her off the beach. The tsunamis of Christmas 2004 claimed the lives of nearly a quarter of a million people. 
But despite the terrible human tragedy, very few wild animals lost their lives. Like Ning Nong, the Kawi Lak elephants knew something was terribly wrong, and all survived. The elephants went on to play a key role in the aftermath of the tsunami. It's been over four years since the tsunami disaster. Amber is now an ambassador for the Elephant Trust and is a regular visitor to nearby Woburn Safari Park. So why do you like elephants? They're like really big and nice. Ning Nong is never far from her thoughts. Think about being on the beach, him picking me up, doing handstands. It's almost like a fairy tale, but I guess she was saved by an elephant. I believe that the elephant knew what he was doing. He was saving himself, Amber, the Mahout. We're very grateful to Ning Nong and the Mahout for saving Amber. And as a thank you, we send him some money every year. And we hope with that money, he'd be able to educate his children. Ning Nong saved my life. He got me off the beat just in time. Next time, 57-year-old Joanne Altsman is struck down by a heart attack. I knew that this was the Big Bang. Only Lulu, a pot-bellied pig, senses that something is wrong. If Lulu hadn't been in my life, I'd be dead. <laughs>